Uh, we're back with billionaire value investor Mario Gabelli. So Mario, we are, um, we're still waiting for Tesla earnings here. That's which, good. Why? Why? Because we don't have to talk about them yet? You'll be over at five. Yeah, well, I mean, we still need to cover them uh, when they get out here. But what have you, I mean, earnings season overall, people are looking at this as a catalyst to go higher. Um, do you think that's a catalyst? I think the market will look forward. Short-term algos, momos, and all of those use, uh, <laughs> use the short-term dynamics of whatever happens on a quarter. I know that if Company X tomorrow announces a disappointment, which I think is good, the stock will be down 10 or 15%, which is great. I'm delighted by that because then I can buy what I like cheaper. We create the fundamental value. What is a business worth over the next five years? And when Mr. Market and now the algos and the momos and all of those quants buy or sell well above or below that, we have to make a decision in tax-free accounts, taxable accounts where you have to be much more sensitive. So uh, Tesla, uh, you know, the world that we live in has seven and a half billion people, but there's a 1.4 billion cars on the road. And the EVs and the hybrids are going to be XYZ percentage of that. So Tesla has a long, long runway. And so when we deal with the vendors, uh, I started my career on the sell side as an analyst covering the autos and farm equipment and conglomerates. So for the for last 43 years, we have a conference in Las Vegas on the auto parts industry. And so we have the uh, individuals and organizations come in and talk about it. So if Tesla reports, it's great. If they don't report, we still have favorites like Dana Corporation. We think it's extraordinarily well run, $20 stock. We have companies that sell parts around the world uh, called Genuine Parts, which we own, uh, that is just terrific. Like they compete with O'Reilly and AutoZone. Mm -hmm. uh, but replacement parts are also important. Who is going to sell the parts for the electric charging stations? What happens if cybersecurity creates, if I was trying to attack the United States, I would have cybersecurity know the, uh, the uh, pray that you all own electric vehicles and then just shut down the whole circuit. Absolutely. With self-driving cars, hacking is going to be an issue. Um, let's stick with earnings today because we had Facebook and we haven't talked much with you about tech. We talked about tech, I guess, when it comes to streaming wars. But uh, I'm just curious, Mario, your take on whether all the reports about privacy concerns and the various scandals Facebook has had to go through really matter in the long run for companies like Facebook, Google. All that. There's no question that it matters, and it matters because of the fact that you just read the 448 pages. You know, the ability of the IRA and the, not the uh, IRS, but the IRA and the GRU attack, attacking our databases so easily and getting information and what the Europeans are super sensitive of because they have their experience about 50, 70 years ago about that dynamic. You will have rules and don't ignore what's going on in the United States or focus on the United States, focus on what's going on in Europe, which will have an impact. You got to come to grips with the fact that you got to protect people's identity. You can't just sell it. Mario, we'll get you out of here. Uh, I don't know. I don't think that uh, it derails the interest that, uh, you know, you have in these stocks, however. Right. Uh, get you out of here on this. Um, Warren Buffett, Berkshire Hathaway annual meeting about a week and a half from now. Will you be there this year? And what have you made of what's been happening in the uh, Berkshire sphere of influence over the last year? Well, today he just sold his holdings uh, of a company called U.S. Gypsum. So he got a couple of billion dollars. So when the notion came out that he's looking at PC&G, yeah. you know, the market's going to try to figure out where is he going to go elephant hunting? Why hasn't he bought it? Is he concerned still about the level of multiples as to whether they'll be sustainable if interest rates rise? What is going to happen with regards to the significant cash flow that he's built up? So these are the notion of succession. You know, I've been doing this dinner that I host for, for Columbia Business School for 15 years now. We'll do it again on uh, next Friday night. We have our own meetings on the money. Uh, the notion of uh, what is Buffett going to do? Now, what he has done, what he has done is never paid a dividend. He's compounded his assets at like 15 or 20 percent. I don't have the number. 19 percent. It's $320,000 a share with uh, 1.5 million shares. Yep. And he owns 47 percent. So, you know, what is he going to do? Uh, he gives the money to the Gates Foundation. They've done a great job at managing it. Uh, it's terrific. And... Uh, where is he going to buy? And uh, we all have our list. Thank we're you very much. We're going to learn nice so much. Oh, don't walk off the set. We, we're going to talk to you. We're going to toss to this, though. Mario Gabelli, chairman and CEO of Gamco Investors, thank you so much. You're not tired. We are. That's all for us from New York.